Hello everybody, it's Chris Hatton here and this is Coach's Corner. So, this episode of uh, Coach's Corner, we're looking again at our formation cards and um, I've decided to speak to you and go through our formation cards which quite a few people have asked me about. It's the 352. Um, so we've just put online on completeacademy.org.uk uh, the ability for you to go on and, and buy these formation cards, print them off. And like we've mentioned before, they're a great tool to have uh, in the changing rooms, at training sessions, for the substitutes on the bench. So everyone has a role or an understanding of their roles and responsibilities within the team if your preference is a 3 5 Two. So we're going to jump straight in and have a little look at this formation cards, think about some key points that you might uh, go through with players and how um, you can work on these in your training sessions. Um, so let's uh, dive in and have a little look. So as always, we um, obviously have uh, the front of our formation card um, here explaining the goalkeeper 352 by the way we can't leave out one of the most important players on the pitch if not the most important player on the pitch of the goalkeeper um, so goalkeeper 352 and then we're going to skip and have a little look at our um, sort of shape and formation uh, with these formation cards here obviously we put our numbers in there but it may change for, for you guys um, so we've got a left centre back a centre back a right centre back uh, left defensive midfielder, right defensive midfielder, uh, central attacking midfielder. Then we've got our left and right midfielder or left and right wing backs. And we've got our left striker and right striker. So that's sort of how uh, the formation is initially set up. So um, key areas, information on how to play this system. We've got 12 things we're going to be working through with this formation, which is going to help you offensively and defensively. So uh, we're going to work through many of these different points here, but these are great bits of information just for your players to have a little look at. Like I said at the start, understand their roles and responsibilities. Um, now the first one, and the first thing you will notice um, that I'm, I'm pulling here with our um, left uh, centre-back and our right centre-back, um, should pull out wide when in possession. So we see that our uh, centre-back here is in possession of the ball and we encourage them to um, pull out into these wide spaces and increase the distance between them and the opposing forwards. Right, it stretches the pitch out. So that is always something that um, I would speak to my players about considering like, if they're a left, uh, left back or a right back of the three at the back to try and pull out as wide as they can um, to sort of stretch uh, the opposition strikers. Um, centre backs uh, should use the spare player to play out of defence. So, as you can see here, when um, the ball is in possession of either the goalkeeper or, or the centre back, uh, to try and uh, be brave, but like take those risks at times to try and play it into central midfielders because they will be able to bring in. Um, the next phase of bringing the left or the right centre back into play. So it's something that um, if you are one of these defensive midfielders within your team, you have to want to get on the ball. All right. And even though the title is saying that you are a defensive midfielder, you have to be a playmaker. You have to be able to create things, get into spaces, get into pockets to try and pick up the ball. So that's sort of one thing that. Um, you should consider if you are taking up one of these roles here of the left or right centre uh, midfielders. Now, this is something that I would always say to my players um, that are wing backs, left and right, especially within the first five minutes of a game, is try and, uh, try and push high and force the opponents towards their own goals. So if you see the number five just here, uh, and the number seven here, trying to uh, encourage them to force themselves as high as they can to try and um, get their opponents to sort of, you know, go towards their own goal. It would definitely open up spaces for our um, left and right centre backs to try and get on the ball. Um, so that's something that I'd always encourage the wing backs. And there's a lot of pros and cons to this formation, which we will look at at the end of this. Um, of these slides but you know one thing is it 
it is a lot of workload for these wing backs, but that is definitely something within the first five minutes of the game that I would always try and encourage. Let's try and pin them back nice and early. The wing back should stay wide to open up the channels for the forwards. Now, I quite like here because I'm not, I don't tend to play the 3-5-2 that often, um, but as you can see, the left uh, central uh, centre back here is in possession of the ball. Encouraging your left wing back here to stay nice and high, uh, sort of stay nice and wide, frees up the chance for the strikers to get involved in the game and start to bring players um, into the game. But I also quite like it when there's a little bit of a rotation between our wing back and our uh, striker, a little interchange. So the striker actually comes out wide and it sometimes frees up my um, wing backs to come inside. And when you start moving defenders like that, it can it can definitely be very confusing. But to start off with a sort of a basis, so your your players sort of understand their roles and some roles and responsibilities, um, the wing back should definitely try and open up the channels to make space for the forwards to try and get on the ball. Um, and you can also see here on the right back side, you can see the ten trying to drop in now to try and get on the ball. Um, so it's and you can see the number seven, the right, the right wing back here is pushing nice and high um, to try and open up these spaces for our number ten to try and get on the ball as well. Uh, the central defender can also um, be in a forward position in front of the defence to act as a playmaker. So if you are that centre back and you do push into those players, it's quite nice because it can actually create a bit of an overload scenario in the midfield. Um, and something that this will encourage, especially for the player on the ball, the left centre back here, um, your goalkeeper can be active in the build-up of the play, and it's obviously something that you'll see quite a lot recently with the modern-day goalkeeper. Is they you know they are very comfortable on the ball these days. So with your centre um, back pushing into these midfield areas, it does create quite a nice overload in the middle, and it does relieve your goalkeeper to try and get on the ball as well. So that's always something to consider. Uh, the two centre midfielders. Now, if you are the number six or if you are the number eight in this position, you have to have a bond, a relationship, an understanding and a balance in your position. So if the six, the number six central midfielder goes to join an attack, the number eight has to naturally slot in and become, um, just in front of the back line, to become that uh, within that defensive position. And it's just the same if the eight was to pick up the ball or if they were to go and join in the attack, the six has to just come round and sort of have that balance, have that cover and just protect the back line. Um, in situations where both would go forward, it will keep us very isolated, um, especially within the midfield and joining into the strikers. So six and eight, you do need to have a bond, you do need to have a relationship, you do need to have an understanding of each other and what is expected of that role. Um, now this is this is quite an interesting slide to have a little look at. Um, so the long ball, when it's played forward, it needs to have quality. And when it does have quality, it can be very, very effective. Um, the number 11 can hold the ball up. They could, you know, they could pin it against a, a defender. They could hold the ball up, uh, bring the number 10 into the game, and then it creates an overload with a 3v2 in the final third, which is obviously something that you're looking for. Um, the forward, so we're, right now we're talking about the left centre-back, the number 11 and the 10. The striker that's not involved in this initial passage here needs to make sure that they are that third man running, anticipating any sort of flick-ons. Um, and it's obviously the same if you're working down the right-hand side of the field, but the long ball with the flick-on and everything like that can be very, very effective as long as we keep active as the striker that's not involved initially. And number 10, another clever, creative player, you need to make sure that you're linking up between. Uh, the number 10, just spoken about him, we we'll speak about him again, uh, can interchange with the two forward and, and something this does great. And as you can see, the 11 here dropping off, the 10 then can go into the spaces. Now this defender here, this, this um, right centre back here, you've got a big decision to make. Do they follow the number 11 to go and get the ball? Or do they hold their position and try and pass it on? But all of that thought process, all of that communication, if it's done quickly, it can disrupt any sort of defence. 
So interchanging with your strikers as a number 10 is something that is very, very effective. Um, as forwards and as forward play goes, you want to try and disrupt the, the back line as much as you can. And this is one example of how you can do that. Um, so we're looking at out of possession now. Now, this is where I said to you before, the, the wing backs um, can drop in and make a back five. This is where the demand for their position, so you're looking at their physical and their fitness levels, um, game understanding of that position. They need to be able to be working high up the pitch with the attacks and to drop back in and support and make a back five here. Um, you know, I, it's it's a lot. It's hard work. Be be specific on who you choose for that, and you know, um, yeah. If, if they can drop in into these areas and make sort of a back five along there, they're going to be very hard to beat. Now, probably my, you know, the, one of the reasons why I don't tend to play the 3-5-2 that often is probably because of this reason here. The central defender can move into a sweeper position when the other two are marking up. So my two center, my left and my right centre backs are both marking players and it sort of gives this number three, the centre back, a sort of a position of a sweeper. Now, I sometimes people believe sometimes people can hide behind that sort of sweeper role. You know, I know I've played with players before, players that have been in front of me as a goalkeeper, and I've seen them sort of, you know, sometimes they don't take control enough because they believe that they need to be free a lot of the time. Some people really own that position and, you know, they can um, be very dominant and if any mistakes or any players come through, they can be there. But I feel like when this happens, we come so defensive with two central... Uh, defensive midfielders and the, the five of them back here defense, uh, defending, it, you know, it's a very, very defensive and sometimes can be um, quite a negative approach to this formation. So it's sort of one of the reasons why, even though when you, when you say you're playing three at the back, it can also sometimes look and, and become one of the most defensive for, uh, formations that you can have. So, yeah, I mean, it, it's, you know, it, it's great security. So, you know, with that three being able to be there and sweep, they can pick up any third men running and pick up any pieces. But in my eyes, not, not too much of a fan when it comes down to this, but you know, there is great, there is great protection there. Um, now the strikers roles, when we're looking defensively, um, you know, pushing through the middle to force the opponents wide and, you know, Every player here, you can see all the arrows coming over, sliding over to try and force players out wide. And, and you can see now we sort of have an overload on this side of the pitch of the amount of players that are involved within this formation. So sort of blind side pressing on a little curved run round to try and force them wide. Never run towards directly because they can either play out either side. And if they were to play out on their left hand side here, it might leave an overload for the attacking team going forward. So you need to make sure it's a blind press, press around the outside to force them to go into wide areas. So that's something for the strikers to consider uh, when defending. Um, and then the opposite to that, if, if both strikers are starting out wide, trying to force them down to the center. So you can see the nine here coming across, trying to screen um, one of the midfield players and the 10 again, you would be sliding across almost like a crab to try and screen players. Um, and then the six and the eight, they should also be screening the forward players. So you're, you're creating a very congested area um, through the center of the park and it's a great overload, but you need to make sure that you cut these off on the blind side. Any sort of pass around the outside here could leave us exposed. So, you know, having a good understanding of your jobs defensively as a forward two, um, and, a, and a midfield three is very, very essential in this formation. So I'm just showing you here sort of like shape rotations that you can make. You can quite easily go into the goalkeeper 3-4-3. Three, three. Uh, the number 10 will just push forward and the 9-11 will move out wide and make the 3-4-3 three, three formation. Um, you could go into a diamond where the 7-5 and five slip back into the fullback um, 
fullback positions and the number three can move forward uh, in front of the defence to make a 4-4-2 dumb formation. And both the seven and the five can drop in to make a defensive 3-5-2, or, or sorry, 5-3-2. Um, so with this, the, the pros of having this 3-5-2 formation you have three strong central midfielders, and I think that's quite a big thing for quite a few people. Like three, um, well, all three have to be playmakers. All three have to have a good understanding of balance and defensive duties within that formation. Um, they all have to try and get on the ball as much as they can within their areas of the game. Um, it packs the midfield. That's one of the pros of it. And also, what what is highlighted here is you should have two out and out uh, central strikers within this shape. Now, the cons to this one, centre backs can be pulled out of position to defend in 1v1s, uh, especially you know if we're getting caught with our wing backs playing quite high and our centre back uh, becoming that sweeper, they can be caught in 1v1 situations. And the biggest thing for me, the wing backs will have a high workload. So the five and the seven, as you can see on here, they will be have duties to get back and make that back five. And they will also need to get forward to try and pin the other team close as they can to to the um, to their own goal. So that's a quick look at the formation of the three five two. Just you know, great little tool to use. Like I said, training, match day, substitutes on the bench. Get a good understanding of, of your formation, of your roles and responsibilities within the team. I hope you found this useful. Um, in the link below will be a link to our website where you can come on and you can buy these and you can obviously use them electronically if you have like a phone or an iPad at your sessions or you can do what we do. We print them off, laminate them. We give them to players. We send them electronically to players so they can read through and understand sort of their roles and responsibilities for this uh, certain formation. Um, there's definitely some pros to this, but there's also a couple of cons that would scare me a little bit. Um, but hopefully you enjoyed this video. Take away as much as you can. Um, thank you for watching. Um, we'll be uploading more content on the Coach's Corner. This is Chris Hatton signing out. Thanks.